This is question four from the 2019 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert paper. As you can see, it's split into two parts. They're both algebra questions. The first one is a question, an algebraic question involving fractions. And the second question is a simultaneous equations with a second order equation as one of them. Or a circle and a line is another way to look at that. You can find an image of this question or a link to an image of this question in the description below. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the board. I've wrote out part A on the board here. We have 3x plus 1 divided by 5 plus x minus 2 divided by 2 is equal to 47 over 10. Now students, whether it be order level or honours, all hate fractions. People hate fractions. I hate fractions. So I get rid of them. I don't like fractions. How do you do this question? Get rid of the fractions. Get a common denominator. If only the same number was on the bottom row of everyone, it's easy to deal with fractions. Fractions can be got rid of or multiplied or added together or taken away very easily if the number on the bottom row is all the same. So how do you get that all the same? First you decide what number you want to put there. That's where you'll hear the lowest common factor. But really it's just any number you want, but pick one that's convenient. For example, it's easy to change 5. You can multiply it by 2, multiply it by 3, multiply it by 4. You can multiply it by any number you want. Once you multiply the top row as well, that would be a fair thing to do. Multiply top and bottom by 7. Any number you want, that's fair. Same with this, multiply top and bottom by any number you want. So really you just have to think of a number you can get 5 to, you can get 2 to, and you can get 10 to. And actually, the number I can think of is 10. But 20 would work as well, 40 would work, 30 would work. But I'll go with 10. Have, uh, let's try and get 5 into a 10. Let's turn 2 into a 10. And let's leave 10 alone. He's already a 10. So here's how I'm going to do that. 3x plus 1, the first one. If I multiply the top row and the bottom row by 2. There's the top multiplied by 2 and the bottom multiplied by 2. I've, already, I've just changed it already for us. This second one, if I multiply the top row by 5, and the bottom row by 5, we get a 10 on the bottom row. Last one, multiply the top row by 1, and the bottom row by 1. Or, just leave it alone, is another way to say that. So now the fractions are a lot easier, they're all the same. Here's how... Well, there's two things we can do. We could just go ahead and add the top rows together now, because they have the same factors. But no, I think it'll be easiest just to multiply everybody by 10. Multiply everybody on the left by 10, everybody on the right by 10. And that will just mean this multiplied by 10, it's gone. This guy, if there's a 10 up here, well, let me... Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll keep saying like this. If there's a 10 up here, it's gone. If there's a 10 here... He's got that's fair as balanced as well. We multiply everybody by the same thing. So that just leaves this line. And let's multiply it out. We have 2 times 3 is uh, 6x. 2 times 1 is 2. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times minus 2 is minus 10. All equals 47. Let's start adding all the like terms together. 6x and 5x is 11x. 2 minus 10 is minus 8 equals 47. Okay, let's add 8 to both sides. That will destroy this guy. Because I, I want to leave x on its own. So let's add 8 to both sides. 47 plus 8. He, got, he disappeared and this new 8 uh, was created. 11x then equals, add these together, 55. Let's divide both sides by 11. 11 divided by 11 leaves a 1. 55 divided by 11. And that equals, let's write it in a new line, x equals 5. That is the final answer. That is part A. Let me rub this out and we'll do part B. Here's part B, a simultaneous equation. Two equations, both with x and y in it. But it's a non-linear simultaneous equation. That means one of them has squares in them. x squares or y squares, or in this case both. Now, there's, you'll also see this question in other parts of the exam. It could, you could be asked to draw both of these. This is a line. If you draw it out, it will look like a line. If you draw this out, it will look like a circle. Let me quickly do that. I won't be too exact, 
But if we draw this line, I guess the y would be, if we move the y across, it would equal 1 over 5 x's, and we would hit the axis at 13 over 5. Don't worry if you don't follow along with this, but we'll get a point somewhere like there, and it slopes something like this, and this will be fairly small down. And if we draw a circle, this is an easier one to draw, a circle around the zero point. This is not important for this answer, by the way. But a circle around zero, that's the square root of 13 radius. Square root of 13 is about three and a bit. Somewhere about here. And we get a picture like that, if we were to draw both of us. They're asking us to solve these simultaneous equations. But solving these, we'll actually find these two points here. So I just thought I'd point that out. But let's go ahead and do that. We don't need to have drawn that. I know I talked a little fast there. And I got these drawings a little too quickly. Don't worry, I just thought I'd show that in case any students was interested. Now, let's solve this simultaneous equation. How we solve a simultaneous equation where one of them is nonlinear, we have to use the substitution method. So we take either one of these we want, but always use the easiest one, always use the simplest one. That's this guy up here. And we're going to rearrange it. x minus 5y equals minus 30. We're going to change this so it looks like x equals or y equals. We're going to solve it for x or y in terms of the other letter. But really, make x equals or y equals, whichever you want. It's going to be easier to make x equals. If I add 5y to both sides, that will destroy this one, and it will equal minus 13 plus 5y. I have x equals. I've made an x equal. Once I've, used, once I've got this from, part, from the first equation, I'll write the second equation again. x squared plus y squared is equal 13. But instead of writing x, why don't I write this? x equals this after all. I know what x equals, so let's write it. So we get minus 13 plus 5y squared plus y squared equals 13. The same thing, I just wrote the same thing again, but with the x I now know. So now this line has the information from both of these together. That's why we can solve it. There's only one thing I don't know here. Why? One, one unknown in one equation, we can do that. Let's start multiplying it out. Okay, first we square out this bracket. Minus 13 plus 5y multiplied by minus 13 plus 5y. That's how we square it, plus y squared equals 13. Okay, let's start doing this work. We have everything multiply everything. Minus 13 by minus 13, minus 13 by 5y, 5y by minus 13, 5y by 5y. Okay, minus 13 by minus 13, use a calculator, but minus by minus makes a plus. 13 by 13 makes 169. 13 by 5, we get minus by plus, so we get a minus. 13 times 5 is 65. Y, there's a Y here, by I guess a 1, is um, 65Y. 5Y by minus 13 is the same sum, so it's 65Y again. 5 by 5, well, plus by plus makes a plus. 5 by 5 makes 25 y by y makes y squared. Plus, so we're finished, that's we're finished with that bit of it. Plus y squared, that's this guy, equals 30. All right, let's start uh, cleaning this up as much as we can. All the y squares together. All the y's together. And uh, that's everything on the left. We'll, we'll start, we'll move them around the equals later. But for now, let's uh, add up the y squares. 25 plus one is 26 y squared, how many y squares? There's one plus 25. Minus 65, minus another 65. Ask a calculator if you're not sure, if you're not good at uh, doing this, is minus um, 130y. And then we're just left with a plus 169 equals 13. All right, we have a quadratic equation. Now remember, a quadratic equation, we need equal zero. We need to have equal zero at the end. So let's get rid of this 13. Let's take 13 from both sides. We get 26y squared minus 130y 
um, plus 169 minus 13. I was going to do that together, but let's uh, just do it out in an extra line. Minus 130y. 169 minus 13 is 156 equals 0. This is a quadratic. Now, you can go ahead and solve this now if you want. If you're really good at sums in your head, you can do it. Or you can use the minus b formula. But one thing I always look for in an equation, is there a number I can divide everything by? Can I make this a little smaller? And the clue here is um, 13 goes into 26. 13 goes into 130. And I actually know 13 goes into this. because I'm not just good in my head. I'm 13 times 13 is 169 and another 13 took away from it so 13 must go in 12 times but don't worry you could just ask the calculator does 13 go into all of these but we can do a little more than that we can actually see 26 goes into that 26 we can ask the calculator but it does 26 actually let's do 13 first 13 goes into this two um two y squared times minus 10 y times plus 12, check with a calculator, and does 13 go into zero? Yeah, it goes in zero times. So you have to do everything, left and right, you have to do everything. But okay, now it's easy to see, actually two goes in as well. So let's get that even smaller. y squared minus five y plus six equals zero. A quadratic. Again, you can do the minus b formula now if you want. Lots of students just love doing that. But I will solve it by factorizing. Two numbers that multiply to get y squared is y and y. Okay, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get 6 and add or take away to get 5. Oh, that's a problem because there's two things. I, I, it could be 2 and 3. Let me do the wrong one first. It could be 6 and 1. But it looks like it could be anyway. 6 multiplied by 1 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. This looks good. So, oh, well, we want minus 5. So how about minus 6 plus 1? Minus 6 plus... No, it's wrong. Minus 6 multiplied by 1 is minus 6, not plus 6. These have to be the same. This line and this line has to be the same. So no, that was actually wrong. So let me rub these two out. Well, just, I thought I'd show you a common mistake a student might make. Let's try the other one. 2 and 3. So 2 and 3. Can we make this work? Um... We need to get minus 5. So minus 2, minus 3, we'll get minus 5. Let's go back and check the 6 again. Minus 2 multiplied by minus 3. 2 minuses make a plus. 2 times 3 makes a 6. This is correct. Okay, let's uh, finish this off then. Minus 2 numbers here multiply to get 0. Well then, that means y minus 2 must equal 0. Or, let me put a little or in there. Or y minus 3 must equal zero. One of these two guys must equal zero. Otherwise, how could you get a zero out? So let's solve this one first. Add two to both sides. Y is equal zero plus two, just two. Add three to both sides. What, um, zero plus three is just three. That's two answers we've got there. We're not quite finished yet. Do not finish. Many students finish here. They did not ask you to, for, to find out two answers for y. They asked you to solve the civil things equations. There's an x there as well. We need to know what x is. But don't worry, you don't have to do all that again. Here's x right here. x is equal this. That means x is equal minus 13 plus 5. Ah, I know what y is equal. I have two answers in fact. I'll use two first x is equal minus 13 plus 10, x is equal minus 3, minus 13 plus 10 is minus 3, that's when x was, when y is equal to, so when y is equal to, x is equal minus 3, you, ca you have to be careful where you put your x, it has to be joined with that y, they are together, x is equal minus 3 when y is equal to, y is only equal to when y, x is equal to minus 3. They are joined together. Let's find the other one though. x is also equal minus 13 plus 5y. But I know y is equal to 3 as well. 
One of, it's equal to one of these. We need to find out. Um, we're not going to find out which one. It's equal to both of them, in fact. So uh, minus 13 plus 15 is equal to... That's plus 2. X is equal to plus 2. X is equal to... Those are joined together. This is the full marks for this question. And just so you know, going back to my picture here, let's see how good my picture was. It's probably not that good. X minus 3, Y2, minus 3, 2, could be there. X2, Y3, 2, 3. Not too bad, my drawing, I don't think. Um, so that's the answer to this question. You don't need the drawing. The drawing was just a little extra. But they could ask the same question in a different, in a different part of the exam when they ask you to draw both of them. Then they ask you maybe to use your drawing to guess these points. And then they'd ask you to solve this to find the real points, which would work identically. Okay, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you.